In the last presentation, we looked at perimeter, and today we're going to look at the second thing that we can find with two-dimensional figures, which is area. So area is defined as the amount of surface inside a flat shape. And so we have our four basic figures again, as well as the formulas for their areas. Our formula for area of a square is A equals S squared, or S times S. Our formula for area of a rectangle is A equals L times W, or length times width. Our formula for parallelogram, remember that when we talked about perimeter of a parallelogram, we said that the sides had no special name. Well, the dimensions or the important numbers for parallelogram are in terms of the area. Our formula for parallelogram is A equals base times height, or B times H. And the height and the base must meet at a right angle. For a triangle, a triangle is technically half of a parallelogram, so we're going to find half the area of the parallelogram. So our formula is going to be 1 half times B times H. Again, where B and H are our base and our height, and they must meet at a right angle. So just like when we talked about perimeter, our procedure when working with area is going to be the same. We want to set up a picture and label the given information. We want to write down any relevant formulas that we're going to need. We're going to plug in the given information, so we want to substitute each value for its corresponding variable. And then solve for the remaining variable. We want to include correct units. Now one thing to note when we talk area, area has square units. This can be written in three different ways. You can write this out in words, for instance, square inches. You can also abbreviate it, for instance, square yards. Or you can use exponents, for instance, feet squared. So also note, when solving application problems, you want to think about whether you need perimeter or area to solve. Area means the inside of a figure. So some examples of applications involving area are laying tile or carpet. You cover the whole floor with tile and carpet. Painting, walls, um, and we'll see some other examples as we continue. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some examples. We're going to start with the square. So we want to find the area of the following squares. First one we has, have is with a side of 9 feet. If we draw a picture of this, this is a square. where each side is 9 feet. I'm just going to label two of them because this is what we need in order to find our area. So in order to find the area, we're going to multiply 9 times 9. So if you're not comfortable with exponents, we can go ahead and write this out as s times s. And when we plug in, we get 9 times 9 is equal to 81. We attach our units, and remember that since this is area, it is square units. So we get A equals 81 feet squared. All right, let's look at a square measuring 14 miles on each side. So again, I can draw a picture. And I can go ahead and multiply 14 times 14. 
14 times 14. Well, I don't have my calculator with me at the moment, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply this out longhand. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 56. 1 times 4 is 4, and 1 times 1 is 1. If we add this together, we get 196. So our area is 196 miles squared. All right, that is our square. Let's go ahead and continue and look at a rectangle. Okay, so our first rectangle we have is we have a rectangle that measures 27 in length and 11 in width. So we have our formula, A equals L times W. I'm going to let 27 be my L and I'm gonna let 11 be my W. So when we plug in, we get A equals 27 times 11. And if you multiply this together, you get 297. We include our correct units. We square the units so we get meters squared. And so our area for this rectangle is 297 meters squared. All right, one more. Let's look at a rectangle that measures 10 centimeters on the short side and 17 centimeters on the long side. So if we go ahead and write down our formula, we get A equals L times W. I'm going to let my longer side be my L. I'm going to let my shorter side be my W. So if we plug in, we get A equals 17 times 10. If we multiply this, we get 170. We get our units, which is centimeters squared. And that takes care of our rectangles. All right, let's go ahead and now look at a parallelogram. Now before we calculate area of a parallelogram, I want to show you kind of where the formula comes from. So if we look at a parallelogram, what we can do is we can actually convert this into a rectangle. I want to chop off this piece here. And if we move it over to here, we'll see that what we have is a rectangle. What are the dimensions of this rectangle? One side is our length or in this term we're going to in this case we're going to call it our base and the other one is the height. So we're going to go ahead and just use those two numbers when we talk about a parallelogram. So if we look at some examples, let's say we start with example C. We want to know what two numbers do we want for our area. Well, we want the two that meet at the right angle. And so that is going to be our 47 and our 24. The 30 has nothing to do with area, that is for perimeter. So if we go ahead and plug into our formula, 
we have a equals b times h. I'm going to let 47 be my base. I'm going to let 24 be my height. And so if we go ahead and plug in, we get 47 times 24. I'm going to go ahead and use a calculator on this one as our multiplication steps are not the important thing. The important thing is calculating the area. And if we multiply these two numbers together, we get 1,128. We include our square units, so we get 1,128 meters squared. Okay, let's look at another example. We have the following parallelogram, and so we want to know what numbers meet at the right angle. That is going to be our 10 and our 18. So when we plug in, we get A equals B times H. I'm going to let 18 be my B. I'm going to let 10 be my H. And we get 18 times 10 is equal to 180. We include our correct units, and so we get 180 inches squared. All right, so that's our parallelogram. The last one that we're going to look at is a triangle. Now I said that a triangle is half of a parallelogram. And so let's go ahead and see what that looks like. If we take a parallelogram, I can cut it in half. And what is the resulting figure? It is a triangle. So when we talk about our parallelogram, remember that the area of a parallelogram was our base times our height. And to find the area of the triangle, we're going to take half the area of the parallelogram. Okay, so let's go ahead and try some examples using this formula. We have the following triangles. We want to calculate the areas. So I'm going to go ahead and plug into my formula the numbers that we want. Again, we might have more numbers running around than we need. And so remember that what we want is we want the ones that meet at a right angle. So for this example, here is my right angle. I'm going to want my 30 and my 16. So if we plug that in, we get A equals 1 half times our base, which is 30 times our height, which is 16. If you want, you can use a calculator now, and instead of using 1 half, let's use 0.5 just to make it a little bit easier on ourselves. So we get 0 .5, 0 0.5 times 30 times 16. And if we multiply that out, I get 240. We include our units which is millimeters squared. All right, let's try one more. This one definitely has lots of numbers running around. Again, we want to keep the ones that meet at the right angle. So I'm going to work with the 20 and the 28 in my formula. So again, our formula is A equals 1 half B times H. If we plug in, we get 1 half times 28 
times 20. Or if you're using a calculator, you may want to use 0 0.5 times 28 times 20. And if we go ahead and multiply this out, we should get 280. We include our units, which is meters squared. All right, that takes care of our triangle. The last one we want to look at is our funky figure. So we looked at this one in the last presentation, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the information that we came up with. Remember that we came up with our other vertical side was nine feet, and our other horizontal side was 12 feet. So this we're gonna see kind of where we how we put this together. So for instance, this is a combination of figures that we've worked with already or that we've already looked at. What this is, is this is a square and a rectangle combined. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the area of the square, what numbers, are the dimensions for the square. Well, that's gonna be six feet and six feet. So to find that area, I'm gonna multiply six times six. What are the dimensions of the rectangle? The rectangle is nine feet times 18 feet. And to find the area of the total figure, we're going to add these two areas together. So if we go ahead and multiply, we get 6 times 6 is 36 plus 9 times 18 is 162. And if we add this together, we get 198 and we include our units, which is feet squared. All right, so that takes care of finding area. So now let's go ahead and look at some other problems that we might see involving area. So besides calculating area, we can find the value of missing sides. So in this, in this part, we're gonna go ahead and talk about what formulas are we going to use, as well as um, where are we going to plug in our information. So the first thing that we have is we have the area of a microscope slide is 12 square centimeters and the length is six centimeters. Notice that we have length. So this microscope slide is a rectangle. So if we go ahead and write out our formula, we're gonna want to use A equals L times W. Now we are told the area is 12. So I'm gonna plug in 12 for A. We are told the length is six, so I'm going to plug in six for L. And so our equation that we get is 12 equals six W. All right, so in order to solve this, to solve for W, we wanna get rid of multiply by six. We are going to divide by six. On the right, my sixes cancel out, leaving me with just W. And 12 divided by six is two. So now we wanna talk about what are the correct units. Well, remember that width is the distance across the short side. And so remember that distance always has regular units. So this is going to be W equals two centimeters.
Okay, let's look at B. A child's play lot is 10 feet wide and has an area of 160 square feet. We want to find the length. So again, we have lengths, we have widths. This is a rectangle. So my formula is going to be A equals L times W. If we go ahead and plug in, we have 10 feet wide, which means that is my width. I'm going to plug that in for W. We have the area is 160. I'm going to plug that in for A. And we are wanting to find the length. So my equation is 160 equals L times 10. In order to solve for L, we want to get rid of multiply by 10. So I'm going to divide by 10. If we divide by 10, we get 16 equals L. And again, remember that since this is the distance of the long side, we are just going to use regular units. So our length is 16 feet. All right, let's look at a couple more. Now, when it comes to squares, you do have to be a little bit more careful. We will talk about how to solve this in another section. For now, we're just going to hope that we all know our square numbers. So we have the area of a square-shaped nature center is 16 square miles. Find the length of one side. So my formula, it says it's a square, so we're going to work with A equals S squared. It says the area is 16 square miles, so I'm going to plug in 16 for A. And I want to know what squared equals 16. So what times itself is equal to 16? Hopefully, you guys know that it's 4. We want to include our units. So this is going to be 4 miles equals S. All right, last one. We want to find the length of one side of a square clock face with an area of 81 square inches. So again, we have our formula A equals S squared. We are told the area is 81 square inches, so I'm going to plug 81 in for A. And then I want to know what times itself is equal to 81. We should get 9 equals s. Again, since this is just the length of one side, we are going to have regular units. So we get s equals 9 feet. Okay, the last thing that we have to talk about is application problems. So these ones we do want to be careful. Some of these are going to be perimeter and some of them are going to be uh, area. And so we want to kind of pick it apart and figure out what is what. So the first thing we have, we have a group of neighbors is fixing up a playground for their children. The rectangular lot is 22 yards by 16 yards. A we have, if chain link fencing costs $6 per yard, how much will they spend to put a fence around the lot? So, let's start by drawing a picture. This is what we're looking at. We have a rectangle. That is 22 by 16. Now, if we look at A, it says chain link fencing costs $6 per yard. And so we want to know how much will they spend to put a fence around the lot. 
This is an example of perimeter. So what are some key words that tell me perimeter? Well, the first one we have is around. We are not going to cover the whole thing with fencing. We are just going to go around the lot. That is perimeter. Another thing that tells me perimeter is it tells me that chain link can, fencing costs six yards, six dollars per yard. This is not square yards, this is regular yards. And remember, if it's regular units, then we're talking about a distance. We're talking about either a perimeter or a length or width. So let's go ahead and calculate the perimeter. So our perimeter is going to be 2L plus 2W. If we plug in, we get P equals 2 times 22 plus 2 times 16. We're going to go ahead and multiply. We get 2 times 22 is 44. 2 times 16 is 32. And if we add this together, we get that the perimeter is 76 yards. Now that just tells me the perimeter. I still need to figure out the cost. It says that the chain link fencing costs six dollars per yard. So to determine our cost, we want to multiply six dollars times our perimeter. And if we do that, we get six times 76 is 456. What are our units on this? It is just going to be dollars. All right, so that's the cost of the fencing. Now we're not done. Um, it says we also want to lay down sod in problem B. So if sod costs $3 per square yard, how much will the neighbors spend to cover the playground with grass? So is this going to be perimeter or area? Well, a couple things that tell me that this is area. We are covering the whole playground. So we want to cover the inside area with sod. The other thing that we see is it costs $3 per square yard. And whenever you see square units, we are talking area. So this is an area problem. To calculate our area, we want to use the formula A equals length times width. If we go ahead and plug in our values, we get 22 times 16. And 22 times 16 is 352. square yards. Now that's just my area. We still need to determine our cost. Our cost is going to be similar to what we did in the previous problem. We're going to multiply three dollars times our area 352 and we get 1056 dollars. Alright, so that takes care of area. And that takes care of the end of this section.